Alka-Seltzer for headaches. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for muscular aches and pains. Ask your druggist for Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> Everywhere, how's mother and dad and the whole family? Well, folks, that old harvest moon is shining down extra bright on the old red barn tonight, and for a very special reason. Yes, the Alka Seltzer National Barn Dance Gang is celebrating its ninth birthday, its 470th happy hayloft party from the old WLS hayloft in Chicago. Yeah! So come right in, folks, and join our ninth birthday. We're celebrating it with a Harvest Home Party. Oh, say, the old hayloft is going to shine tonight, folks. So come on, boys and girls, start shining. Hayloft will shine tonight, hayloft will shine. They grew our birthday night, hayloft will shine. Nine years of friends and death, all right in line. Get the numbers, then here we go again. Hayloft will shine. birthday spared, boys and girls. My, my, how time flies. And to prove it, we go back 470 barn dances, folks, to the first song sung for the first time on your first hayloft party. The tune fit as a fiddle. The singers, Hezzy, Kenny, Frank, and Gaby, the Hoosier Hot Shot. <laughs>
Bang, lose your hot shots and say that old ditty has us all feeling fit as a fiddle. Right, Joe, and if you think those fiddlers and Eddie Peabody and his banjo ain't feeling fit, just listen to them go. Oh, I say, listen to them go. Well, start those anniversary addicts, boys and girls, and Archie, call it off Harvest Home Style, will ya? <laughs> yeah. Friends, we're great believers in the idea that credit should be given where it is due. And to you, Barn Dance listeners, goes the credit for this program celebrating its ninth anniversary tonight. It is your loyalty to this program and to Alka Seltzer that have made this possible. And so, to the countless thousands of you who are Alka Seltzer users, we say thanks a million for your friendship, past, present, and future. And those of you who have yet to become acquainted with Alka Seltzer, we say Try it just once. Ask your druggist for Alka-Seltzer the next time you want real relief for a headache, a touch of acid indigestion, muscular aches and pains, morning after misery, or for that dull, achy feeling of a cold. Remember, you can get Alka-Seltzer at all drugstores in 30 and 60 cent size packages. Also, buy the glass at any drugstore soda fountain. And when you go to your druggist, friends, remember that next week is Nationally Advertised Brands Week. Look around the store and see what nationally advertised products you need that he can supply. You'll be doing yourself and him a favor. Hey, that was a square dance and a half, gang, and a swell way to work up an appetite for all the good eats, not forgetting the big birthday cake we'll have later on. <laughs> Uh-oh, seems the Denny sisters can't wait. Let's see what they've got. I get the neck of the chicken. I get the rumble feet right. I get the leaky umbrella. Everyone shoves me aside. When morning papers come to the door, sure as day I'm too late, and they're mine long about four. I get the neck of the chicken, I get the hand-me-down shawl, and when the company weekend, I get the couch in the hall. That's why I can't get over this dream that came true. I get the neck of the chicken Well, how did I ever get you? I get the neck of the chicken That's how they gave me the bird And then the family snapshot Mine is the face that's blurred When I jump in my shower each morning The hot water is gone. I get the neck of the chicken. I get the burnt piece of toast. I get that seat in the movie. The one in back of the pole. That's why I can't get over this fine hot do If I get the neck of the chicken, well, how did I ever get you? A tasty bit of harmony served in true hayloft style, didn't he, sisters? Hey, say, Pat Buttram. Yeah, Jody, yeah. What say, Pat, want, uh, there's a fellow around here a while ago looking for you. He said you knew him. Oh, he said I knowed him? Uh-huh. Uh, what was his name? Well, I don't remember his name. Uh, I'd know it, though, if I heard it. Uh, let me see. I know him, huh? Yeah, huh? Uh, was his name uh, Brewer? No. Uh, was it Campbell? No. Uh, was it Brown? No. Was it Brown? I told you once his name wasn't Brown. Well, I know two Browns. I thought maybe it's the oh. other. <laughs> well, what did the fellow want to see me about anyway, Joe? Well, he was looking for a hired hand and thought maybe you knew someone. 
Well, no, I don't know of any good hand right off. Could... How about your Uncle Herkimer? Isn't he a good hard hand? Uncle Herkimer? Yeah. Oh, Joe, he ain't no hand. He, he's just a sore thumb. <laughs> He's too lazy to work in the field. Huh? You mean your Uncle Herkimer is lazy? Joe, he's so lazy. What, what, he's even too lazy to make coffee. He, j- he just puts coffee grounds on his mustache and then drinks hot water. <laughs> Boy, that's lazy. <laughs> but uh, I'd be just a man for that job, Joe. I'm a pretty good worker, if I do say so myself. Just the other day, I went out and gathered 15 bushels of apples. Yeah? Yeah, I would have gathered 16 bushels, only I ate one bushel. <laughs> Why, Pat, you should be careful about eating apples in the field. They may have worms in them. You'd better watch out. Listen, when I eat apples, the worms better watch out for themselves. <laughs> Tell me, Pat, how about your field crops this year? Did you grow much cotton on your farm? Well, no, no. We didn't plant no cotton at all this year. We had a... To the bowl weevil. Oh, uh huh. Well, how about the corn crop? Did you harvest lots of corn? No, no didn't plant no corn either. There's a fear that it'd uh, be too dry a year for corn. Oh, uh-huh. plant... Well, how about potatoes? Did you plant? No, no, no didn't plant no potatoes either. Scared of tater bugs on them. Well, then, what in the world did you plant this year? Didn't plant nothing. I just played safe this year. <laughs> Well, Pat, what you should do is get an agricultural farm expert to help you with your planting and harvesting, and then you'd be assured of a good crop. Well, them farm experts is all right, I reckon, Joe, but they go too much according to figures. Huh? What do you mean? Well, a farm expert, he figures if a boy can pick five quarts of huckleberries an hour and a girl can pick four quarts of berries an hour, he figures both of them together can pick nine quarts an hour. Well? Oh, Joe, any darn farmer knows both of them together ain't going to pick no berries at all. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Patrick, but pick a pretty partner now and get ready for the anniversary waltz, sung by the Hayloft Chorus and patterned by everybody's favorite, Eddie Peabody, the banjo king. with my personal gratitude at being included in this grand bond dance gang, may I present another old favorite on the banjo. Good old Ida, sweet as apple cider.
song was never snappier, which reminds me we're due for another good old Harvest Home ditty, and from the Belle of the Barn Dance and her bestest bow, Lulu Belle and Scotty. When the moon goes to shining and my heart goes to pining for my Blue Ridge Mountain home, where the pine trees are playing and the pine trees are swaying, that is where I long to roam. When the sun comes a beaming, then I start into dreaming of a place where flowers bloom. When I get back again, I'm gonna live to the end in my Blue Ridge Mountain home. Now I never thought that I could be so sad till I left my mountain home. But the time is a coming when I'll be so glad and I never more will roam. For I've learned a lesson that I won't forget wherever I may be. And oh, how I'm longing for the folks down home, cause they mean more than all the world to me. I gotta swallow away now. When the stars are awakening, then I start into thinking of the place I left behind. And I keep on a saying while I know she's a praying that I'm coming back sometime. With the old fiddle singing, I'll soon be a swinging to the tune of home, sweet home. And I know she'll be waiting by the old garden gate in my Blue Ridge Mountain home. My mother and my sister and my brother, they will welcome me back home. And I know they'll be happy when I climb up the hill to my Blue Ridge Mountain home. <laughs> well, I claim that old tune had all the poetry of the Blue Ridges in person. <laughs> and now let's listen to a serenade to the Harvest Moon, Memories of 1908. Sisters and you boys, that old harvest moon was never lovelier. Friends, the Miles Laboratories, they're the folks that make Alka-Seltzer, you know. Well, they also make two great vitamin products under the brand name of One A Day. There's One A Day brand vitamin A and D tablets, and also One A Day brand vitamin B complex tablets. Jack Holden, which are you going to talk about tonight? About our One A Day B complex vitamin tablets, Joe. You've all heard that quotation from Shakespeare, All is not gold that glistens. Well, in everyday language, that means that some things that look like bargains are not bargains after all. And that's something everybody should keep in mind when they buy B vitamins, isn't it, Jack? You bet it is. You see, when it comes to vitamins, the most value is not necessarily in the largest package or the greatest number of capsules or tablets. That's why one-a-day vitamins are so economical to use, friends. Everybody ought to find out all about the family size package of one-a-day brand vitamin B complex tablets, which contains 90 tablets. Now, of course, you may possibly find some other B-complex product which offers, say, twice the number of tablets for around the same price. Yeah, but don't stop there. And find out how many of those other B-complex tablets you're supposed to take every day to get your B-vitamins. And then, friends, remember, with one-a-day brand vitamin B-complex, you take just one a day. Just one a day. And that's what the name one-a-day means. One tablet, once a day. 
Yes, friends, one-a-day brand vitamin B complex tablets are so vitamin-rich, you take only one tablet a day to get your full minimum daily supply of all the B vitamins for which requirements have been established by the authorities on nutrition. And because one tablet a day is all you take, the cost is surprisingly low. For example, in that large economy size package, you get 90 tablets for only $2 and a quarter. Now, that's enough to last one person from now until after Christmas. And that means they actually cost you only about 17 cents a week. Of course, your druggist has smaller size packages if you want them. So when you go to your druggist, be sure to ask for and insist on one-a-day brand vitamin B complex tablets. Right, Jack. Well, our ninth anniversary in Harvest Home Party goes right along, folks, and it's sure nice to meet all our old songs and old friends again. But say, Hezzy, uh-huh. I, I hear you Hoosier Hot Shots have brought a new girl to the party. What's her name? Oh, boy, where do you see her, Joe? Her name is Sweet Prue Miller. <laughs> yeah. All right, fellas, let's start to prunin'. Yes, well, sir. you start first and we'll fall in. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Hoping someday she would be there blushing bright. Blushing bright. Sweet Brunella didn't take none to this bargain. Sparkin'. She was plumb against them feuding mountain boys. Mountain boys. Suitors always come a shooting, so she'd send them off a scooting. Why, she even tamed the Martins and the Coys. Oh, the Martins and the Coys. Why, she even tamed the Martins and the Coys. Then one day, Brunella met a city slicker. And a darn fool wore a collar and a tie. He did? Well, he wooed her in the moonlight, and was on a pretty June night. They skedaddled from the mountains on the slide. Shh. Quiet! Well, sir, he toted Brunella to the city in one of them things that they call a multi bug. And he bought her furs and laces, took her out to fancy places, and they say she drank her zombies from a jug. From a jug! From a jug! And they say she drunk her zombies from a jar of spring. Now this never satisfied our sweet Oh, no. She was born and reared in proper mountain style. Sure. Instead of rumba prancing, she was used to halo dancing, so she got tired of that there city living in a while. Then one day she hiked it back up to the mountain. And she met Pat Buttram up on the way. Uh-huh. And that great big Buttram feller, he up and wedded Brunella, and he's got her up there in the mountains for to stay. For to stay, and that it hay, and he's got her in the mountains for to stay. Brunella is quite a gal, who's your hot chance? But now, friends, here's a Harvest Home salute to our brave boys in the armed services all over the world. The Hayloft Chorus sings, Keep the Home Fires Burning. Shining when the 
friends, if the cooler and changeable weather of fall has caused you to catch cold, listen. Take good care of yourself, and for prompt relief of that miserable, ache-all-over feeling, take Alka-Seltzer. Be sure you get more rest than usual, too, and avoid drafts. Dress comfortably and get your daily vitamins. Then, too, if your cold causes a sore throat, use Alka-Seltzer as a gargle for soothing, comforting relief. Yes, friends, keep Alka-Seltzer handy always and take it whenever you have a cold. It can help you feel better fast. Folks, how about checking up? Is your home a V home? Are you and your neighbors displaying in your windows our government's V for victory symbol? Well, here are the five requirements to get one. Number one, preparedness for air raid emergencies, knowledge of first aid procedure. Number two, conversation, conservation of food, clothing, transportation, goods, and health. Number three, salvage of essential materials to be converted into immediate war use. Number four, rumor squelching. If it's a secret, keep it. If it's a rumor, bury it. Number five, regular purchase of war bonds and stamps. If your home meets with these requirements, you will be given a V home sticker to post in your window, a symbol that your home is 100% American and all out for victory. Well, thanks a lot, folks, for joining our ninth anniversary party tonight. We sincerely hope that you'll be with us again next Saturday night and every Saturday night in our 10th year here in the old Halo. So until we meet again next weekend, this is Joe Kelly saying good night and good health to you all for Alcatel. Again, this is Jack Chris Kringle Benny wishing you a very Merry Christmas and an extremely happy New Year from the entire Paramount studio in Hollywood. Yes, sir, here I am, all dressed up in red breeches and reindeer, ready to spread Christmas cheer in my own puerile and banal style. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful, folks, how good the holiday season makes you feel? Why, I'm just saturated with it. I love everybody, even Fred Allen. And believe me, it's really a holiday when I can love that guy. But believe it or not, Fred's here with me right now. And if you could see us, you'd understand why our new picture is called Love Thy Neighbor. <laughs> you know, Freddie, when I discovered what the Christmas spirit did to us, you could have knocked me over with a feather. With those toothpicks that hold up your torso, it would have been a cinch. Oh, pardon me, Jackie. I forgot. We're pals. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Fred. We've said so many things about each other in the past. <laughs> hey, remember the time I said you were so tight, you'd open a can of sardines, eat the fish, save the can for a cigarette case, and then have the key made into a button hook? A button hook. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right after you said it, I tried it, and it worked out fine. <laughs> It did? Yeah. <laughs> say, hey, remember, remember the top... Oh, pardon me, Jack. I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> remember the time I said I'd knock your teeth so loose you'd think there was a dice game going on in your mouth? <laughs> and you're just the guy that can do it. Oh. Jackie Benny, I could not. You'd have slapped me silly. Why, what are you talking about? You'd have broken every bone in my body. Oh, flatterer, <laughs> you'd have thumped me into a pub. You don't know your own strength. Hey, maybe somebody ought to tell me. Why well, should say so. I'm the weakling. You are? Why, of course. I'm just the spineless thing. And deep down in your heart, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> say, Fred, remember the time I said you were so weak that your arms looked like buggy whips with fingers? <laughs> Wasn't that an awful thing for me to say? <laughs> no, no, I was the heel, remember? I said that about you. You did? <laughs> well, that was a perfect description. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Jack, those days have gone forever. From now on, we're friends. Or oh, you're a jolly good fellow. No. You're a jolly good fellow. Well, well we are jolly good fellows, which nobody can deny. <laughs> yes, sir, Fred, it's wonderful what that good old Christmas spirit will do. Imagine me singing that you're a jolly good fellow. 
But folks, that's what all of us here at the Paramount Studio want to tell you for Christmas 1940 and New Year 1941. We think you're jolly good fellows too, and we wish you the best of everything. And that spirit will carry over all during the year to come. Of course, as far as I'm concerned, this spirit of uh, brotherhood with Fred Allen ends exactly at noon on January 2nd, because nobody could be expected to love Allen for...